we're back and this one is one for the Nissan guys not just any Nissan no probably the most stunning Y62 that I've ever seen and we do quite a lot here don't we oh yeah now, unbelievable we saw this one a month ago and we actually planned and got this one back and it's not just about the car the color how pristine it is even after all the battle wounds that she's gone through. She's been around Australia. She's been to all the big tracks and that. And this car is basically detailed almost. Every time it's, we see it, it's, it's in perfect condition. Incredible. And Rod, you and I are both Toyota men. We, we both drive Toyotas. We both love our Toyotas. We do. But I tell you, I, I'm, I'm close to becoming a Nissan fan. Yeah. I think we do enough Toyotas. It was about time that we got the Nissan guys back involved. Let's get started. Let's go have a look. Around the front. We're going to start at the front. We'll start at the we front We always this start time. at the side, but not today. We'll start at the front. You'll, you'll notice this time, last time we did one of these, we, we had sweat absolutely pouring we off did. us because it was so hot. This time the sweat's pouring off the car because it's been pouring. <laughs> it is terrible. You think we deliberately made it all... Well, yeah, we, you know when you wet a car down to make it all gleam and polish and everything? Yeah. No, no, the no. weather is just horrible here horrible. today and that. But we've, we've even look got at bling. the camera under a bag. We do. But anyway, let's all have right. a look at this. Obviously, we'll start off. Normally, we end with the errors. We've got a pair of GMEs on the front. One Obviously, for, UHF. One for UHF yeah. and one for Selfie. Selfie again. Yeah. Becoming very popular, the, the Selfie Selfies systems. Selfies are fantastic. I have one in my car, and, um, and the phone reception is just incredible. Good. I love the number plate, Y62X. You don't see that? Look, the winch is behind. Now, I didn't actually ask. Is a carbon winch? It is. Look at it. It's actually got a beautiful brand on winch. it. It's got a big rope on it. I like the steel light. The bars, obviously, are cut. It's, it's a custom itself. I love the low bars. I think days are gone of people actually putting the full-size bull bars with all the hoops and that on. A lot more style involved. You see it a lot more now with the, the 200 series, the 300 series. Uh, the Y62 is a very, very popular for it. And look at it, look how classy it is. Have a look Absolutely at those lights, done right, perfect. On those red lights on the side. They're not Actually, standard. I didn't notice them. No, what's going on there? So they're Dan's lights. Why aren't they Jeff's light? What, what's a Dan's <laughs> light? Yeah. So Dan's is the brand of the lights. Um, so, so they're not, an aftermarket solution. So it's not just that solution. piece, it's a whole system. That's right. So he's done right. it to style it all up. Yeah. Well, that's and I love, it, the, I love the black. You'll notice on this car, he's done what's called a chrome delete, and all of the chrome on the car has been painted, but not just in any paint, that's Raptor paint. I was actually wondering whether this was actually standard or whether he'd actually turn around and done it. So he's even, oh, he has two. All the little lettering and all the things, he's actually turned around and done the whole theme. Yep. It's basically no chrome. Yeah, you are right, there is no chrome, it's all black or it's the colour of the car. I love the colour of the car. Probably very hard for anybody to see the colour of this car. But look, it's absolutely stunning. Have a look at that snorkel. That's a bit different. Now, there's actually a story behind this snorkel. And when we do tell the stories about customers' rides, we're going to say the good and the bad together. We're going to be fair. Now, this particular snorkel, I'm not going to name the brand of it. All right. He put it on. He actually done the cutout for it in the car. He put it all in, and what he found out, he used to sweep across the top, and he goes, when you hit water, not hit water really hard, but you, when you had water come up the bonnet, it had a habit of going in and actually sweeping straight into the side of the snorkel. So he had to modify the snorkel. He's chopped the top. He's actually made this little box, so it actually takes the air in from the left side, not from the right side. So, so far, when he does actually do a, a river crossing that's a little bit deeper and it, water does sweep up, it doesn't tend to lead it in. A lot of other snorkels you'll see that the head comes up and then out. So when you do sweep the water up, it tends to go underneath the head. But with this one, because the opening was right here, it actually used to suck it in and he actually had it, he actually had it happen uh, two or three times. So he actually did his own mod to turn around and fix it up. Now, Craig, come around. I've got something to show you. Oh, wow. Get out of this. You think that's the normal car colour? Guess what? It's not. This actually has a set of bush parry. If you want to know what colour the car is... No way! Look at that. Look at these. Now they are called bush barriers. I can never get them on. It's a work of art getting them on. But they're magnetic. 
So I've been told that they don't fit the 300 series because it's all aluminium panel. <laughs> so, but he's actually aluminium. he's actually been all over Australia with this, and all of these they all come off. And the paint job just it's looks immaculate. like it's the day it come off the showroom floor. Look at it. That's amazing. I'm masterfully taking them all off. So Michael, the owner, can sit there and put them all back on properly when I've finished destroying this so car. Easy. I'm going to have a look at these for my car. It is. So yeah. look at that. It's well done. Just wish I was better at putting them back on. But Craig, get how to do this. <laughs> I'm sure there's an art form this. So Michael's right. showing me we'll later on. We'll get Michael on. to fix that later on. All right. That's we'll all right. go through. Look at the wrap. The, he's just everything. Part of his chrome delete, he's just redone everything in Raptor paint and I love it. It looks great, even along the door sills, the door handles. Even the top edges. Like the top edges, everything's just door well handles, protected. Even the button, look at that list. The button, look, he's even wrapped the button. That's a man with too much time on his hand. Absolutely. <laughs> he's gone nuts with it. Look at that. What about this awning? It's epic. It wraps all the way around the whole car. All the way around the back. <coughs> And I love these ones. Look how thick they are. It's a big, strong one. So what do they call this? This is a 270 degree 270. system. That's right. And he's even got, I love these. These are little stands that poke up in the air. He's got oh, one here and he's actually up. made another push one. the rain off. It helps. Um, stops the water from pooling on top of the, on top of the awning, which is so actually brilliant. And on a day like today, where it is raining on and off, just we'll be standing under here. That's a lot. why we set this one up first. I don't so know if you noticed, like... but up here, Rod, there's some custom brackets that have been created to actually lift the awning up. So it actually sits up above the vehicle because generally you would have the awning about this height. Now the problem with the Y62, of course, is when the the boot lifts up or the the uh, the back lifts up, it would hit the awning. So what so he's done is actually well, he's in. lifted the awning up a yeah. lot higher. But the great thing about this, you can just move a, a, a bolt and the entire awning can just lift off and be put away. So it's actually quite brilliant. And in actual fact, he was telling me that him and a mate were actually designing the roof rack. They were actually going to do part of this themselves as a business. And they made all their own brackets and other bits. And it looks great. I love the way it follows the contour of the shape and that. And it just never eventuated in the end. But Kudos to them. I mean, Brilliant idea. That, it's very, very well done. To do done. something this yourself, you know, basically from home designing it all. And I just love the way people's ingenuity about coming up with all these different ideas. Are doing, and that's nothing compared to what he's actually done. So here we are, we're going here. Because in here, Craig knows all about this. So I'm going to film Craig. Oh, we'll wow. show him through. We'll show him what he's actually done in here. So okay, what's going on so in here? If we fold down the back seat here. Now... Can you get right in, in here, Rod? Have a look under the back here. So all the tools are hidden down the back. So in here, hidden away, he's got, he's got his inverter around the side here. Um, 2,500 watt inverter, I believe it was. Uh, this is his water connection um, on off. There's a switch here. Um, to change the rear locker on the rear diff from stock to locked mode so that you can you can have the rear locker always locked and it doesn't disengage. Now yeah. I've also just got to point out this amazing material. So um, Mick was showing me this before. It's this stuff is incredibly <laughs> strong. This is it's just amazing. It is it it's is like so strong, cone. but it's so light. Feel it. It's actually, like it's, a piece of paper. It actually is. It's spectacularly light. Yeah. Probably so it's just like a honeycomb of some kind and that. So What's this he using is, it for? This is the material that he used to build the drawers in the back of his car. No um, way. It's not something that the average person would have access to. It's yep. not that cheap. Uh, but a friend of his had a sheet of it available and um, they used this to create the drawers. I mean, that's amazing. There's just no weight in it, but... Yeah. Now they were saying too that when they go away, sometimes when they're doing a massive trip, they'll turn around and they'll take the double seat out, which gives them more room to pack more stuff in. Um, they've got young Ben, he's 11 years old now, he's six when they, when they started off doing stuff like that. So he's got plenty of room over there. 
<coughs> so they've got no, it's just amazing that the, not only they got a brilliant draw system in the back, which we'll get to in a sec, but he's got that much storage on this end. Goes to show you the size of the Y62. It lends itself to having such a big area in the back, more so than probably most others, that you can turn around and do it. You couldn't do that in a 300 series. There's no possible way. Way too short in the back. Anyway, we'll continue on. We'll move around the car. Oh, I'll throw that in here. Better throw that in. We'll go around. We'll get to the back, eh? Hey? Well, let's, let's go, go around the back. the back. This oh, is what wow. we were promising you. Now, obviously, we've already got it up. So you've got his rear door. Both these um, gates open up on, on the left and right. He's got his jerry cans. Obviously, he's got his axe and tools here. And he's told me that you unpack this. Oh, look at that. You end up with a little storage. You can actually double the size. This happened. It opens up. No way. So you've got a little camping set up there. On this side, obviously, he's got his spare wheel. He's got his rubbish bin on the back. And he actually keeps his compressor, air, air compressor and hoses and that in this little bag in here to save on room. But the big thing to talk about this, that they actually built this during lockdown. And when they built it, he goes, oh, I've got some time. And in seven days, in just seven days, he turned around and built this. Now let's open this up. I'll see if I can remember exactly how it opens. So is that just a table? Nope. This is actually a full kitchen wow. that comes out. And then more to that. You've got a bench that comes out and it keeps coming out. This slides out, turns it upside down, becomes a sink. So it all pops down. So now he's got a sink, he's got a bench, he's got his entire cooktop, he's got his gas top, but more than that, he's got his trouble buddy, he's got his coffee grinder. No way. He's got his little coffee maker, which is an on hot, um, it's Stay on top. a burner. Yeah, type one. He's actually got hot cold, so he pulls his water out from underneath here. Is it here or here? There we go. You pull your water out, and as soon as you start it up, the hot water comes on, so it's instant hot water. He has 90 litres of hot water underneath the car. Now, not only has he got a big kitchen area with kinks, underneath here he's got all of his pantry area underneath the chop top. He has another for all of his pots and oh, pans and the... more chop tops, everything's all in here. <coughs> That's all great, Rob, but what about your fridge? Where exactly. that goes in the back of the car? You do all that, and where do you put the fridge? Well, you think you put it in the back, but no. Michael turned around and made not just one, but two. He has a fridge and he has a freezer that are just made into drawers. Now, you can have them both as fridges, you can have them both as freezers. They're both 30 litres each, and as I said, you can turn around, but look at it, he's made them, into, and they seal perfectly when you... How's that? A fridge in the freezer that just pops straight out of the back. And completely hidden away. Yeah, Weber barbecue, which he normally puts on the very, very back when he wants to do that. These are just his bags, he turns around, they actually do this for basically more of their pantry as well. So they put all their food and bits and pieces that don't need to go in the fridge, go up in there. And once again, look at this kitchen. This comes out just over two metres. All right. It is huge. And to have turn around and have a little pie warmer, hot and cold, coffee grinder. Look, as you go around, it's got everything here to turn around and all in the back of a wagon. So you can never turn around. And actually, it's got just as much stuff in the back here as what I previously had in my old canopy. All right. So it goes to show that this is a car that can go anywhere. It's light on its feet. You can park it in a normal car parking spot, but you've got a whole kitchen and everything else about it. And, you know, <coughs> then there's still more to show, right? So, well, obviously, he's got his red arc system up here. And up here, you can turn around and you can see how his battery and how much he's draining down his batteries and everything. 100 Little... amp hour battery, I believe, in this one. Lithium. Lithium. Now, he's oh, obviously I love got. This. Have, have a look at this up the top here. I saw that and I thought that's ingenious where he's turned around and he's actually made it. He's got his little parcel up there for putting your, your paper towel. He's now, actually, I, I can't remember the name of these, but I'm going to find out and I'm going to pop it up on the, screen, it up the now screen now because I need one of those in the back of my car. <laughs> I've, I've got a little kitchen one, but this one's great. It's got a little wind cover, so it keeps the 
the paper towel hidden away. It's great. It is. Now, a lot of lights up there. Have you seen the detail in these lights? He's actually sat there and drilled all the little holes and everything and put the lights on the other back side of the plastic. And you can turn around and you can change them so you can have your anti-bug and they go to full red as well. And so you've got your lighting, you've got your, your night lights for all the bugs and everything like that. But the detail he has gone to, and I'm telling you now, Mike was sitting over there watching us going, all the bits and pieces and details that we're missing. But yep. <laughs> there's only so much that we can do, right? And seven days, in seven days, he built all this. So if you're bored at home, there is no excuse. Grab yourself a fridge and a freezer and go and make your own. Because this system can go in any 80 series, 100 series. Man, you'd make something in a Suzuki Sierra. There is nothing stopping you. If you have a wagon, there is nothing stopping you from making something so similar. But let's stop yabbering on underneath here. I'm getting wet here, Rod. Let's go have a look I'm at the fine. tent. I'm fine. I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> now, you chose to be out there, don't you blame me. Swap over, here we go. I'll stand out in the rain and you show the people what's All going right. on here. Of course, he's got a rooftop tent and not just any rooftop tent. Believe it or not, this tent sleeps four people. I couldn't believe it when I saw it, but you can easily sleep four people in here. So there's three of them, um, Michael, his wife and, uh, and the son, Ben and the three of them can sleep in there and their sleeping bags don't even touch. It's, there's that much room up here. It's just, a, it's an amazing camper. And that was all fine until, you know, young Ben, when he was six, it used to work. Now he's 11, apparently he wiggles around too much. So they're throwing him <laughs> on a camper and a swag and that. So now he sleeps out here. <laughs> that's right. So that's it. And I asked him, I asked young Ben, what this was all about. Like, what's this bag's all about? It turns out you unclip it. And before you go up there, everything, you hang all your shoes in. Oh, that's great. I Keeps always all have your shoes, shoes and everything the, off the ground. The, tent. the whole thing goes up. Now, when Mike brought the car to us today, he only put the um, all the coverings on one side. But get a load of that car. Look how beautiful the paint job is on this car. And it's not, I tell you what, it's not a colour that I see all the time either. But he's gone over all the wheels and everything. I was going to say, he's missed some little bits here. Little, he hasn't done those yet. <laughs> it's the only bit that on the whole car that he's missed. But I tell you what, he's got a world map up in there on the back wall. Did you see that? Yep, yep, saw the world map. I was impressed with that. So how about we're going to go and throw it up in the air? All right, she's up. We'll check her all out. There's actually a few details under here we want to check out, but obviously the couple of things that we missed before when we are talking about the rear bar work, I don't think we actually mentioned the fact that this is actually a wrestler, wrestler. rear bar. Yeah, that's right. And not only is it a Rassler rear bar, it's actually also got the Rassler side steps. Um, yeah, the rock sliders rock slide. on each side, which is pretty cool. Now, <coughs> when we come under, the first thing we notice is that he's actually missing a spare wheel. This is the second one into episode. Now, I don't know, you might be able to make comments. Because he has, these are actually the BF Goodrich, are they 35 inch? Yep. BF Goodrich, 35 whether they actually fit under here, whether you can actually get 35s actually up and under there, I'm not sure, because it'd be a good spot to put a second one, so you're not just carrying one on the back. Now, Rod, I, then, I want to know what's the go with the back here. Is this a spaceship or something? That looks bizarre. They I've do never look unusual. Like the it. first time I actually saw one of these, it did look very, very unusual because it wasn't, you know, dealing with big land cruisers and everything like that, it wasn't common to see a rear system so it had a rear independent system and look at it, it means the diff's actually solid mounted right so like the front it has rear cv shafts in there as well and it's got all these arms now what i noticed i believe that these are always aluminium right from factory but i notice that this one's a bit different i put my eyes on here so i can read on it on track four by four on track four by four that means that for some reason these are modified and I don't know why. Now, this does have a, almost a 4.1 GVM upgrade. I think it's a 4,085 kilo. Yeah, that's right. GVM upgrade, because I know the rear springs are 400 kilo, plus 400 kilos, yep. and it does have yep. airbags. And the airbags. The airbags on the inside of them as well. Um, so maybe these arms have got something to do with um, the GVM, I don't know. If you do know, please put it in the comments behind. Oh, maybe, he's just, maybe he's just 
bashed it too much when he's off-road because have a look at that this thing has done some off-road there's a lot of machining in there it has but it's also done it's, it's been really well kept and it doesn't matter you do the cape you do all those big areas you do the simpson and everything <coughs> i think he does a great job of keeping it all clean but Absolutely. you're not going to get all that this is where stone chips and everything will happen Battle underneath and that. so we'll keep going along so we actually thought that this was a standard exhaust but it's not it's actually a tight pan exhaust it's a twin three inch into one. It's actually got uh, stuff and other stuff, and it's got other stuff. Let me, <laughs> this is the reason why they give me notes on this because I don't have a memory in me. But give me a sec, I wanna make sure it's right because I dare say it's an important thing. It's a Taipan three inch exhaust with high flow cats and a Vortex mufflers. I'm going to say muffler, one muffler. And not only that, this actually has a full set of extractors on it as well. So he's taken the original headers off and he's actually put a set of extractors on and then the tie whole pan, thing's all tie pan, pan, the whole lot. Tie pan, tie pan even did all the yep. extractors and everything on it. So, and it looks really, sounds great. Quickly go to the front. And the reason for that is, is that as we look at it, it's actually a dash um, bull bar and also a dash uh, bash plates underneath. Now, I have actually not heard the brand dash before. Tell me, if you've got any experience with it, are they good, what do you think? It looks the part, it looks all great on there. And as the plates come underneath, they go all the way down, so not only is his whole engine protected, his transmission's protected, and they've got shields underneath the transfer case. So he's actually done a pretty good job, like this thing's really built to do it and <clears throat> the best part about it is a lot of these a lot of things the independent cars tend to have a lot of room they don't get hooked up like my 79 series is shocking for getting the re-lift hangers all caught up so i always get a bit jealous of cars that have um independent suspension but <clears throat> there's a lot of things to be said because a lot of people like the 105 land cruiser because they have beam axles they don't want the ifs systems well Here's a Y62 that is basically independent all round. Two different trains of thoughts. What's with these recovery points, Rob? There's no way that, that would, you'd be able to recover off that. I looked at that. this and I thought, that's the weirdest recovery point. How is that going to work, a little slither? But what you don't see, the bracket actually comes all the way back and up into here. So they're actually pretty good. So there's actually two really solid recovery points on both sides. And... Um, no, nah, really well done. We'll keep coming back along. <coughs> now, one of the good things, and it actually shows, even though this has got a big bash plate, and the bash plate actually steps up closer to the transmission, there is a ton of room between the transmission pan and the plate. So plenty of room if you want to turn around and put a big cast aluminium pan on it, and I highly recommend them for these things. It's actually here getting a big cooler kit installed in it now. And not only that, we're actually a bit sus on this one. We're actually pulling the original cooler out to check the bypass valve because we actually think that this car might actually have a stuck bypass valve. So we've been testing in that. We found a way, we're actually gonna pull the whole original cooler out and take the bypass apart and have a quick look at it and make sure it's all right. Um, what else have we got, Craig? What am I missing? I think you've covered it pretty well. There's, there's not too much that, um, no. that we've missed there. I'll tell you what, for a big exhaust system, it seems to have plenty of room. It's not too close to anything. You can stick your hands up around the whole lot as I go through, right even up the front on both sides. It doesn't seem to have been crammed in there. It goes yeah, right, up the, really, really well. The clearance under the car is just incredible, but I don't Actually, know. You can tell it's done some more. The old, the old bash plate for the old, um, tank has actually been whopped in there a little bit but the good thing about these they're easy to take off stick on the ground you jump on them a couple of times they're straight ish enough all right <clears throat> that's enough for underneath how about we jump at it we get out there in this crappy weather we'll take it for a bit of a run all right let's as long get as going. i don't have to stand in the rain again i'm happy <laughs> it's been um, a long time since i drove a nissan patrol <laughs> so where are all the buttons? Where's everything? I had to sit here and learn where the handbrake was and all that. But let's, oh, geez, I didn't even have it in gear. My Lord, it's an automatic and I still got it wrong. 
<laughs> this is scary. Rod driving a <laughs> Nissan. Who thought they'd see the day? I know. <laughs> a lot of room. This is a big car. You feel it's a big car. It's a bit like the the 200 series. Um, I, I, with feel and its weight and everything. I must say, I almost prefer the feel in here. I prefer this to the 300, I have to say, because it just feels a bit more spacious. It feels a bit more open. It's incredible. There's a lot of room. I was going to say, that's one of the most natural things in here. A lot of people get in. Some yeah. people love the room. Some people love being cosy. Yeah. So you get that whether you're like a mid-range car, whether you're like a full-size car. But this is obviously a full-size car. So. Yeah, it's an incredible sort of setup. There is so much room in here. I'm too busy. I'm supposed to be driving. I'm sitting here yeah, looking talk, around talk the whole about car. The car, not looking at. The, <laughs> yeah. Although while we are just talking about that, Rod, have a look at this. He's actually done. He, oh, he, no, he was he saying he didn't like he the wood tray, and he's wrapped a coated all the inside. But not only that, he's wrapped a coated all the way around. All of it. The T-bar shift display. It's top of the ashtray it, compartment. All, all up through the dash, everything. It's all been wrapped to coated. And it's it actually looks amazing. And what he was saying is it's just, it is so tough and it's scratch proof. It just, he said it makes cleaning so easy on it because nothing sticks to it, of course. There's and, no glare either. And there's no glare. It, it really does look, um, look amazing. Oh. Got a bit of takeoff. Well, that's not even quarter throttle. This thing just launches. Turn the indicator off. I just love the way these things drive. They've got a great auto in them. Yeah. They're really well known. Seven speed auto. They've got a good size motor in them. This one is actually had just a, a, a flash tune done on it. It's a mild one and it was done from Powerhouse. Uh, believe we'll put it up in we'll here. We'll put it up here because I knew it two seconds it. ago and I've done that now. <laughs> Pretty sure it's powerhouse and it's just what he calls a mid-range or a mild one. Yeah. He goes he didn't want a lot he just wanted it to be super reliable because as you know they go all over Australia with this car. It doesn't need a lot. And it's I mean it's wet weather at the moment so you really can't do much with it but that's not even half throttle. Yeah that's not even that's half incredible. throttle. That's incredible. That's great. It's really... There's no other car... Like, the 200 series doesn't drive like this out of the box. No. You know, well, the no. turbos, the lag in it and everything. I mean, it's big. It's a big 5.7 litre engine, yeah. right? So it's just naturally good. There are upgrades to this. You can turn around and you can obviously put superchargers and everything on it. I just don't think whether you need to go need that it, far because it's naturally a good car. It's very, very smooth. Comfortable. The seats Super are very smooth. nice. The leather's very yeah. nice. He's got a sunroof, except he, he's got his um, <laughs> rooftop tent up, up there. So <laughs> you don't get a much out of it. I was saying, you were saying before that while he does have a reverse mirror, because of his drawers, you really can't see anything. Yep. So he's mounted an iPad. I love this. Yeah, the iPad he, mini, he, which is a beautiful, perfect size what for where the sunglass done holder was. Yeah, he's reversed the sunglass holder and then mounted an iPad mini in that space. Beautiful little little location. And he can have his uh, HEMA maps, mud maps, whatever up there, or even just some movies for uh, Ben. And, and he's got a normal sat-nav in here, so you can just use that as a sat-nav, and that yeah. he's using for all his off-road off stuff. Maps. And it's quite convenient too. Like it's easy to look at and easy to read. Yeah. I love the light steering. So I'm trying to get used to it. I'm sitting here in the <laughs> wet, and rrr, rrr, spinning the wheels, just taking off lightly. It's quite a lively car, it and uh, very. very it's a type of car that you could easily put the family in it yep. and drive it to all these remote. Imagine going yep. through the Simpson Desert in something so comfortable. Well, you see, he's done Simpson air conditioning, Desert, everything, light he's steering. Done the cape in it. Yeah. And this is this is a car that's got all the gear yep. at the back. Yep. It's got all the gear up top. I mean, yep. he's got everything yep. in this the, car. All the luxury and and comfort in the front. It's fantastic. And as a wagon, it is big enough to be able to do all the upgrades that's been done to this. Absolutely. That is, a, that is the single best rear draw system I have ever seen, hands down, 
in any make model car. There is no doubt that he has done that so well. I love the paint job. I yep. love the colour. Yep. I, I love, love the magnetic, uh, the, the barriers, magnetic, the bush uh, barriers, bush barriers. They He's are really brilliant. thought about it. Really brilliant idea. And and this yep. is a guy that actually does the Telegraph yep. track. He does the track. He does the Simpson Desert. Yep. He's done some of the hard yep. ones, the big ones. Yep. He's been Cops. on the Flinger Ranges. Yep. He's done all the hard Parker ones, Ruler all the tough tracks. Yeah. Yep. And yep. the whole lot while his son's been in the back, yep. Yep. Being, being comfortable. Yep. And um, so, so yeah. Are you a Toyota man that would actually consider? A Y62, because I know I am. I would actually consider driving one of these. I know of a Toyota man that actually bought a Y62, and that was Studer. There right? you go. But now he's now he's Nissan through and through because now he's got his GU. That's so right. He, he was converted completely. That's right. So tell us, do you know of any upgrades that yep. you would do for this car? Um, have you had any problems? You know, were you converted? Did you go to the dark side and the Nissan? All right. Because I know I would. This is a car that I could comfortably get into yep. and go, yep, grab the wife, throw her in the seat, and know that she's going to be comfortable after driving around for a few hours. And yep. That, right? yep. So put in the comments below, which would you prefer? And not only that, they never made these with a manual, did they? No. no. Never made it manual. No. There's Maybe a reason why they're auto. <laughs> Ever reliable. They do really, really well. That's right. That's so, right. <laughs> but... Did you notice something about our walk around during we did the walk around? Two cars. There was two cars episode. that we filmed, and we're not talking about Stew Dogs either. There was two cars. Did you see it? Did you notice the second car sitting with us while we were filming? Should no? we go back to then how about, and, and do that? How about what do you we go check it out? So how many of you actually noticed the second car? We had it here the whole time, and there is a whole story behind this little electric car. This now, little I, car has done more <laughs> tough tracks, probably, than I have. And certainly Stu Dog's car. There's a whole story behind this. We're not going to tell you the whole story, because I think it's more important to bring Michael and young Ben in, and we're going to get them to tell us about where this car has been and what it's done. Michael, Ben, come over. Come and join us. We'll get this thing down so we can talk about it. <coughs> like this. Introduced to, introduced to young Ben, 11 years old, and, and his father, Michael, who actually owned the car and have put this together. And you've done an amazing job with the whole vehicle. Love the colour, love the job. You've been all over the country, but this wasn't the only car that you took on all these trips. You right. took this one as well, right? So Ben, tell us, what is it? What? Uh, it's a Land Rover Defender TRX4. It's a Land Rover Defender TRX4. So this is uh, an electric car. Right? Now you've got a remote control, you bought that here. But when you take this on tracks, so I thought, oh, you take this out and you play with it. But you've actually driven the telegraph track with this car. Right, you get out with a remote control and you just walk down the telegraph track and your father would follow you in this car. And I thought, how long would it go? And apparently, how far does it go for? Five kilometres. It goes for about five kilometres. But you don't give up there, do you? You actually change the battery out. So they change the batteries out and they keep actually going and just keep going along. The Telegraph track isn't the only place that you've taken it. What other tracks have you taken it on? Uh, the Crab and Rocky track. The Crab and the Rocky track? You were telling me before, when you drove the Crab track, you were the only one that made it up. None of the big cars could make it, but this one did. <laughs> so obviously it's an epic vehicle. And when you feel all the suspension on, it's on portals. What else has it got? Twin locked. Twin locked on portals. It's a Land Rover. It's got his lights. It's got his lights all happening and everything. The night drive. How fast can it go? Faster than you can run? No? So it goes a long night. So it can do rock crawling as well? Yeah. It can do the whole lot. So when you got to gunshot, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Carried it across because it, yeah. the water was probably a metre and a half on the other side. I tell you what, <clears throat> he's done a great job. and. To take the family along, but also to take the ideas along. To turn around and take the young fella with his own little car and allow him to walk some of the tracks, especially the hardest climbs and the hardest bits, and let him have a crack at doing it himself. It's actually really testament to a family thing, really. Obviously, you keep your, your air compressor and your hose out, but I'm sure you keep the little car inside somewhere nice and safe and that. So please, we hope you loved what we did here today. One for the Nissan guys. If you've got a Y62, it goes to show you what you can do. Please like, 
and subscribe. It means a lot for us to subscribe, to keep our numbers up and to tell us that we're on the right track and we're doing the right thing. And um, get the bell on. Most importantly, get the bell on and uh, we'll see you out in the track soon. See you guys. See ya. Otherwise, we'll start here. Are and... you ready? Are you ready? You ready? All right, ready. Oh, he's ready now. That makes one of us. Yeah, All right. Um, oh, it's it's I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought, I'll be free one day from...